I'm nose greasing this beer because I cannot deal with this foam. I've never heard nose greasing. What? I've never heard that term. Okay, so you like take this out of oh. your face. There's always grease on your face. Of course, T-zone. Face. Okay, so then you take it and you just like kind of. Then I have grease in my drink. Yeah, which is like means you can drink it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Today we're talking about Frances Cleveland, wife of Grover Cleveland. So, like, basically, Grover Cleveland gets elected president, and he was just like a fat, lonely man living alone in that White House. He was like, okay, I'm in a very unique situation. I'm not married, and like, I need a chick that's going to like be the first lady. Rose Cleveland, Grover's lesbian sister, was like, Let's invite the Emma Folsom lady to a White House something. So, like, Emma went to the White House, and everyone was like, I think he's going to marry Emma Folsom. Like, that's going to be the way this shakes down. But then, you know, Groves, like, kind of saw Emma's daughter, Frances, beautiful 21-year-old girl, and he was like, how can I hit that? Like, it was romantic, and like, he wound up being like, let's just you and me take a little tour of this White House situation. So like, he took her out to like, some balcony that's all like, f-ing romantic or whatever. And he was just like, look at this, like, look at this. He's like, I live in the most expensive house in America. It's f-ing fabulous. So like, she like, looked at it and was like, it's fabulous. I could maybe see myself being the first lady. But then Emma Folsom saw that, like, Rover was jockeying on her daughter, Frances. Like, she was like, okay, like, I think you're about to get with the guy that I like, which is, like, bogus. You just, like, get out of the country. So she sends her to Europe for, like, one year after her graduation. But unbeknownst to her own damn self, Grover Cleveland wrote Frances, like, a letter and was like, let's get married. And... <laughs> Francis like wrote back like yes I will marry you like it was one of those like it was like a Chloe and Lamar sort of nine day wedding situation where they like very quickly announced their engagement Grover was like Francis was like going to be the main bitch the press freaked out so like Grover was like okay well I will be fully committed to a certain woman and I will be fully committed to a woman that's my husband wife <laughs> Wait, what was it saying? I didn't eat today. That's probably so bad. We need to get some food in you. Okay, wait. Let's see you. Oh, honey, cute. Oh, I'm so proud of you. One place, frog and nuggets. Frog and... <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. What do you think? Curling up. <laughs> So, like, they did that, and the press was, like, hounding. Like, this was the first time that some president, like, married a girl while he was in the White House. She was kind of like an egg girl. Like, every time she was on a magazine cover, they would move mad units. It's like her image was really exploited, and people were putting her everywhere, everything from, like, household cleaning products to, like, small personal items, like pill boxes, wooden things, because they felt that, like, yeah, this girl will sell sh-. But she was like, whatever. You guys can, like, bastardize me and turn me into all of these different commercial products. Actually, I'm a college-educated woman. I'm put together, and, I'm, like, people are interested in me in, in a way that they haven't been interested in other first ladies. And I'm going to, like, blow that up. Like, if everyone's going to be paying attention to me, let's make sure they're paying attention to me for the right reasons. And by the way, I would like to be called Frank. I mean, you can call me Francis, you can call me Frank, but mostly Frank. It's pretty cool, a girl saying she wants to be called Frank. I mean, that's the thing is like, she's a down ass bitch. Like she's like, every single Saturday, I'm going to meet with the working women of Washington. And there will be lines forming outside of the White House. Francis Cleveland like saw two young girls eating out of, the, out of a dumpster one day. She's like, that's not right. Like, this is not right. And so she started a charity called, like, The Home for Friendless Colored Girls. I'm going to say, like, that's a brutal name for a charity. Can you be quiet? Wait one second. Okay, that's good. But she had all this 
going on. So like Grover, he was like, I don't want my wife especially, women shouldn't bother their head with politics, but like especially my wife should not be bothering her head with politics. Like she, hold on, where's my lighter? Thank you. She was the one that said like, yeah, okay, like, yeah, okay. Groves, like you're like, you're telling me that I can't have a political opinion or you're telling me whatever, but like it, these are my girls. Like I'm gonna have these people, I'm gonna shake all of their hands, I'm gonna hear their thoughts, I'm gonna hear their voices. And she went out of her way to support women. Like she was so charitable, she never stopped. And on her very last day, in the White House. 23,000 people came out to meet her. And she was like, thanks so much. She's great. I think she's like, honestly, I'm in love with her. Like, I think she's the greatest first lady ever. Cheers. Cheers to day drinking. Day drinking. Oh. <laughs>